to the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass on this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we welcome our many visitors today as well. It is great to have you with us. We have a custom in our parish. At the end of the Mass, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called home by God. You are welcome to join us. The readings for this Mass can be found on page 1164 at the back of your hymnal. Father Jeff is away for this week until Saturday on retreat. Father Bill Endress will be filling in for him, which means there will be a Mass on Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Our Mass intention for this Mass is Josephine Angelo. In the first reading today, you will hear the words, Seek the Lord while he may be count found. Call him while he is near. In the silence that follows, I invite you to consider how, clo how close Jesus is right now. In fact, even if you whisper, he will hear you. And may God bless you. Please join us in sitting number 841, Gathered as One.
who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to retain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 586.
Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet, that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord.
Life isn't fair. Why do others get more? Why do they get the same as us when they've done less? Those kind of thoughts are, are natural. But if we concentrate only on those major players, we miss a good part of the message that Jesus is trying to give us because those last hired have something to tell us as well. When I was going through school, I could guarantee that if there was a sporting event going on, if we were involved in a game or if it was gym class, I could guarantee 100% I was going to be picked last. That was just the way it was. I was not athletic. I was a band geek. And, you know, I was in the marching band, the jazz band, and senior play band, and I was in the French club and the chess club, all these not athletic things because that was not my skill set. So I knew when gym class came around, who was going to get me? It was that poor team, whoever got last pick. So, Carrying that pain with me, I can kind of project that on these guys who were hired last. I know what they might have been feeling, and yes, this is a parable. But in real life, I can understand what that would feel like. And especially as an adult now, I can understand what their kind of fear might have been. If I don't get hired today, how am I going to feed my family? How are we going to survive? What's going to happen to us? And then compounding that are the feelings of, why was I not hired? Am I not good enough? Is there something wrong with me? Why did anybody want me to work for them today? That's a tough place to be. No one wants to be last. No one wants to be forgotten. That can do irreparable damage to our self-image, our self-confidence. It brings us down from where we can be. It's really difficult to live in that space. And yet there are people around us every day who live with those kind of thoughts and doubts about themselves. Where does that leave us? Well, we might be one of those in that space. But even if we are, it's our job as Catholic Christians to go out and find those people and to share with them God's love through us, to let them know you have value. There is a reason that you exist. God created you on purpose. You weren't an accident. People who live in a negative space have a great tendency to do harm to themselves. And we can't allow that. We need to be there as Christ for all those around us, but especially the poor and the needy and the depressed and those who are struggling. Because all throughout Scripture, if you read, God has a very special place in His heart for just those people. His little ones, his anoim in Hebrew. And so we cannot, in good conscience, and in an attempt to really follow Christ, ignore that. That's a part of our calling. It's a part of our mission. So if you are one of those living in that negative space, I implore you, find someone to talk to. Get some help. Talk to someone who maybe is a professional, or at least someone who can show you that you have value and are loved. And if you're not in that negative space, I also implore you, look around. Keep your antenna up. <clears throat> Be aware of the people around you and what they're going through. Because we are Christ to each other. Christ embodied. And it's our job, our mission, to go out and to spread his love. Otherwise, this is meaningless. We have to take that on as our job. And if we ever get into that space where we wonder, do I have worth? Is there a reason for me to exist? Just remember today's gospel. 
Jesus gives us that answer. You are loved. You are cared for. And in God's eyes, you are good enough. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, good and loving God, knowing how generous you are in loving us and caring for us, we offer all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 658, Seek Ye First.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will be called for us the bread of life. Blessed, God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of the Church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, and what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs to these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while on this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share of the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Salvatore Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle St. Benedict and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to announce the Gospel of the Lord. As we go forth, please join us in singing All the Ends of the Earth, 604. <laughs> 